Creating one memorable character in a film is hard work. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Hats off to those guys who create two or more in one film. Now, Charlie tells me you're a butcher. Well, y yes, I am a butcher. Ah, do you link your own sausage? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors playing multiple roles in movies. Oh, there they go! There they go! Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got to pull Rocky Marciano out their ass! That's the one! That's the one! Rocky Marciano! Rocky Marciano! For this list, we're considering movies in which one actor played more than one role. However, we're excluding movies like Tootsie or Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello! <laughs> because technically those actors are just playing one role. That role just happens to involve dressing up as someone else. But underneath it all, they're still them. And just so you know, a spoiler alert may be in order. Well, that is if you understood The Prestige. Number 10, Hugh Jackman, The Prestige. What you're about to see is considered safe. For whatever reason, most multiple role performances are found in comedies. Hugh Jackman therefore deserves special credit for duplicating the gimmick's success in a drama. It was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. Jackman portrays a talented magician driven by fierce competition, both personal and professional, with his rival played by Christian Bale, who may or may not also play multiple roles. Along the way, his anger, ambition, and determination to be the more impressive act leads him down a dark path. What you're about to witness is not magic. It is purely science. While these qualities are hinted at when he turns up later as a titled lord, they are made even more evident when we find out about the clones and murders involved with his so-called death-defying trick. No, 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 wait, I'm not... Number 9. Alec Guinness, Kind Hearts and Coronets. That was my employer, Lord Escoint Escoint. Actors dream of the kind of showcase that Kind Hearts and Coronets provided Alec Guinness, but it takes a true dream of an actor to pull it off. That was Admiral Lord Horatio Descoin. Guinness does so, dazzling viewers with his impeccably delivered performances. Hey, you, get on with that parcel and never mind what we are talking about. Don't you dare touch me like that. Each of the eight characters he essays is indelibly drawn, even when they have scant screen time. There was General Lord Rufus Descoin. The nuances, the gestures, and the telling traits with which Guinness imbues his characters comprise a masterclass in cinema acting. There was Lady Agatha Descoin. And in peerless comedic skill. The life cut short was one rich in achievement and promise of service to humanity. Number eight, Tyler Perry, The Medea Franchise. You're right. You right. Tyler Perry creates an unforgettable character in Medea Simmons, a tough, awesomely vindictive, and hilariously opinionated woman who creates a riot whenever she appears on the screen. Can you just hold me one more time? Oh, God. The indelible Medea would be achievement enough, but Perry didn't stop there. He also portrays Medea's brother Joe, a crazy and ornery old man who always has an insult handy. Man, you is funny. You are the next Lenny Bruce. You funny. And her nephew, Brian, who attempts to bring a little sanity into the chaotic world of Medea. I need you to help me get this money back from Lockwise. Lockwise Industries? New York? Yeah. That is a Ponzi scheme, man. Perry manages to make these three disparate characters seem like part of the same dysfunctional family in the film series. We're having a very private family moment right now. You need to take that little baby and y'all come on back some other time. Now go on now, go on. Okay, okay. Number seven, Michael J. Fox, the Back to the Future franchise. Mom, mom, is that you? Time travel does weird things to people. And when you're an actor, it often lets you play your own ancestors and descendants. Nobody calls me chicken needles. Nobody! Though the first film doesn't feature multiple roles, in the Back to the Future sequels, 
Michael J. Fox's Marty McFly comes into contact with his great-great-grandfather. Maggie! Fetch some water, we got a hard on here! And his future son and daughter, as well as an older version of himself. And audiences ate it up. I'm not sure where Jennifer is, Mom. Sure about home hours ago. Fox handles the job with the ease and comic slickness that defined his best work. With a few deft touches, he tells the audience all they need to know about these characters. Dad, it's for you. All right, well, I'll take down the den. Excuse me. Attract! Number six, John Cleese, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. What? None shall pass. I have no quarrel with you, good tonight. Members of the Monty Python comedy troupe excel at multiple roles but John Cleese goes above and beyond in his characterizations in this comedy classic. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. His gallant Lancelot is stalwart and slightly lunk-headed. His French soldier is eccentrically bizarre. Oh, la vache. Quoi? Fetchez la vache. His black knight is the epitome of stubborn foolishness. I'm invincible! You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs! And no wizard at Hogwarts was ever so impressive as his enchanter revealing his name. By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? They're all unmistakably John Cleese, but also strikingly individual. And most of all, they're unbearably funny. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look! Just a flesh wound. Number five, Mel Brooks, Spaceballs. Good, good. Silliness, hilarity, crudeness, and zaniness in more or less equal parts. That's what defines a good Mel Brooks movie. You heard of me? Heard of you? Who hasn't heard of yogurt? That's also what defines Brooks' own performances in Spaceballs. Never underestimate the power of the Schwartz. As Scroob, the president of a planet that has exhausted its own atmosphere, he's a typical Brooksian character, full of vaudeville shtick played straight. Beasties, what's happened to his head? It's on backwards. This is terrible. Do something. The same could be said of his other character, Yogurt. But there, Brooks gets to layer in a bit more tenderness beneath the anything for a laugh facade. Space falls to dog. Me. May the Schwartz be with you. Number four, Charlie Chaplin, The Great Dictator. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin is known for primarily playing one character, the little tramp. Most amusing. But the immortal Chaplin served double duty in his classic satire, The Great Dictator. <laughs> one character, known only as the barber, is in the little tramp tradition. The other, based on Adolf Hitler, is a totally separate piece of comedic brilliance. Both characters evoke gales of laughter, but the tone is distinctly different. One laughs with the Jewish barber and at the dictator. demonstrating that laughter can be a dangerous weapon against tyrants. Number three, Mike Myers, the Austin Powers franchise. Very shagadelic, baby, yeah! <laughs> the box office failure of So I Married an Axe Murderer fortunately didn't deter Mike Myers from attempting multiple roles again. I'm dead sexy. Look at my sexy body. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, the world would have been bereft of Austin Powers and Dr. Evil. Right. And that would mean no shagalicious, no Dr. Evil air quotes or pinky moves, one hundred billion dollars. Or Mini-Me. Breathtaking. I shall call him Mini-Me. 
Powers and Evil have become iconic pop culture characters, and their over-the-top personas are a tribute to Myers when he's got all his mojo. All right, slaphead, turn around. Where's my mojo? Number two, Eddie Murphy, The Nutty Professor franchise. Professor, come on. Morning. Hey, Professor. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Hi, Professor. Morning. From Coming to America to Bowfinger and Norbit, Eddie Murphy has made a habit of playing multiple roles in many of his movies, but he really shines in the Nutty Professor films. Come on. Come on over here. Come on in here. Let's show walk. Come on over. Then, then uh, you're going to limp back. You walk over, but you're limping back. Jerry Lewis may have created three characters in the 1963 original, but Murphy throws himself into seven different roles for his first film. You need to go down to the laboratory and mix you up another batch of this blue stuff. Come on back to the party, Sherman, because Carla doesn't want you. She wants me. Sure, the main ones are the kind-hearted Professor Klump and the sleek and sexy Buddy Love, but his ability really shines through when he takes on the other members of the Klump family with devastatingly fun results. An exercise. Look at me. That's all muscle. Oh, you fat. I'm muscle. Oh, look, look at my little Bill. He's a little Hercules. Show me muscle again. Oh, Hercules, Hercules. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, now I've got goosebumps. Oh, my God, so I'm not an only child. I'm a twin. He's your brother. I love you both. And your love has meant nothing to either of us. It has meant something to me. Well, give me the gore details, son number one. It's a goddamn massacre, Pop. Yeah, we have met. We and I went back in business. You would have been my number one lady. Those are my records. What are you doing? You're not going to get this girl by sitting around listening to records and jerking off. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Number one, Peter Sellers, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Yes, sir, the accomplishments have all just come in. The comic genius that was Peter Sellers created enduring multiple roles in The Mouse That Roared. Which, uh brings me, gentlemen, to the question of non-fraternization. But it was his amazing triple turn in Dr. Strangelove that landed him at the top of this list. I'm coming through fine too, eh? Good, then... Well then, as you say, we're both coming through fine. Stanley Kubrick's Black Farce was a high-wire act that required absolutely pitch-perfect tone in order to succeed. A moment, please, Mr. President. Sellers manages to achieve that while turning in three wildly different performances. Oh, uh, yes. I um, can't quite see what you're getting at. From the stiffly British Captain Mandrake to the soft-spoken and bewildered U.S. President, I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. To the demented and slapstick-inspired Dr. Strangelove, Sellers' work is the definition of chameleonic. <laughs> and simply can't be equaled. I have a plan. <laughs> Monsieur has been what? Do you agree with our list? What other actors who played multiple roles are your favorite? What the hell are you doing here? What are you talking about? What the hell am I doing here? I come here all the time. It's my favorite restaurant. I get a steak and I... I know that. It was my favorite restaurant first. For more enthralling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> You're doing great. You're going to be a star.